Welcome to Destination d people. Today, we're going to be talking about the Fast Pass Plus system in Walt Disney World. We're going to explain everything you need to know about the Fast Pass system and other tips. So what exactly is a Fast Pass? A Fast Pass is a system that Disney uses to help people wait in shorter lines. So instead of waiting in a long line, you can go to the separate line, you can scan your Magic Band or your Disney card, and you can go to a much shorter line and get on the ride or attraction faster. So this system was first put in place in 1999. The FastPass system then was an actual card you got that had a certain time, an hour window that you could ride the certain attraction. So you could get one at a time, and then you could crisscross and get as many as you want. So Disney World came up with a newer system called FastPass Plus. This system allows you to book three attractions or rides ahead of time, up to 60 days out. And you could book these, again, in our window, and you don't have to run into the park and run to your ride. You have a shorter line waiting for you during that time slot. So why exactly is FastPass used? Well, if you've ever been to Disney World, you know it can get really, really packed. Lines can get really, really long. So Disney came up with this idea that people could pre-book fast pass attractions for a certain window. And that way they didn't have to come into the park and run from here to there or zigzag around and get physical fast passes. Um, they also wanted to make sure that people were dispersed around the park and not all in one section. This way lines would naturally be shorter and people wouldn't be sitting in line, they'd be going doing other things. From a business standpoint, well, if people are in line, they can't spend money. So Disney wants people to obviously be doing other things like shopping or eating or buying drinks rather than just sitting in line. So how does FastPass work? So first thing you're gonna to need to do is register or sign up for a My Disney Experience account. So you go to either uh, the website, disneyworld.com, and you could click in the right sign up or register, or you can download the app, which I did a video on and showed you all about the My Disney Experience app. Um, but once you have registered to the My Disney Experience account, you're ready to link your tickets and link your uh, hotel reservations. So in order to book a fast pass, you need to have at least your Disney World tickets linked to your account. So usually if you book them online, they'll link right to your account if you're signed up, or if you call um, the people, the customer service reps can help you with that, or you could get a number and link it yourself. But you need to have your tickets linked to your My Disney Experience app. Whether you're staying on property or not, the tickets have to be linked to your My Disney Experience account in order to even obtain a fast pass. So once you hit the 60 day mark from your first night at your hotel, you can actually go on and book fast passes for the whole length of your stay. So for example, if you're staying at the Polynesian for seven nights and that first night is 60 days out, you're gonna go on and you're gonna find that you can actually book for 66 or 67 days out. Um, so it's 60 days from your first night at your linked reservation that you could book for your entire stay. So that means every single day is open for you to book. Uh, so the earliest you can get on and book your fast passes is 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that means you wanna set an alarm and you wanna make sure that you are on the app or on My Disney Experience at 7 a.m. or even before that and make sure that you're ready and have a plan for all of your rides. So if you're not staying on Disney property or you're a Florida resident commuting for the day, um, you, it's 30 day window for each of the days that you go. So you can't book for the whole length of your stay unless you can link your resort reservation to the My Disney Experience app. All right, so another thing to note about the My Disney Experience app and the FastPass Plus system is the fact that there are tiers for three out of the four parks. What that means is it's a little bit extra research on your part. So Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom have ride tiers. The best rides in those parks, you can only choose one of those rides, and then you can choose two other of the less popular rides in each of those parks. The Magic Kingdom, you can actually book any three fast passes you want for any of the rides that you choose. The Disney Hollywood Studios uh, tier one rides include the Toy Story Land rides. Usually when there's a new opening of a new ride or new park, they put those as tier one because those are gonna be the most popular. So it forces people to choose. 
So Hollywood Studios has Toy Story Midway Mania as a tier one. It has the new Alien Saucers ride as a, as a tier one. And it has the very popular Slinky Dog Roller Coaster as a tier one. So you can only choose one of those rides to get a Fast Pass for. The tier twos now at Hollywood Studios, you can have Rock and Roller Coaster, Twilight uh, Tower of uh, Terror, you can do uh, Star Tours, and a couple other things. Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's tier one include Pandora World, which is a newer world in Animal Kingdom uh, based on the movie Avatar. So those rides include Avatar Flight of the Passage or the Navi River Journey as tier one rides. The tier two rides in Animal Kingdom are Expedition Everest, the Safari, um, and the Cali River Rapids, the Dinosaur Ride, and a couple other things. Epcot also has tiers, no surprise. So Epcot's tier one rides include Frozen, Test Track, and Soren. Of course, those are the, one of three of the better rides, so you can only choose one of those to get a... All right, so tips for the Fast Pass Plus system. You really need to plan out your schedule. Um, to some of you guys, you're like, how can I plan out this far in advance? Well, that's just how Disney has made it. I don't make the rules, but I know that people have the best time in Disney plan it out. They can't just wing it. If you wing it, you're going to have a very tough time. If you go late in the morning, don't expect to do much. People are there. There's huge crowds. There's hundreds of thousands of people in the area. Um, the, the waits can be very long. So you need to have dining figured out. You need to have fast passes figured out. You've got to have uh, a loose idea of things you really, really want to do in Disney World. So what I suggest doing is hard copy sheet of a tentative plan before you book your fast passes or like a Google Doc. We use a Google Doc, that way everyone in the family can kind of see it and we can always change it, it's clean, it's, it's digital. We can see it while we're in the parks uh, for planning. So map out your dining first. You wanna make sure that you don't have fast passes at the same time as dining uh, because you're not gonna be able to do both. You wanna make sure you know what parks you're gonna be at and what parks in the morning, the day, the afternoon, where you're gonna be. And you wanna kind of come up with a plan. Look at the maps of Disney World parks and you know, see what makes sense. You don't wanna zigzag across the park if you don't have to. Um, you wanna make sure that you know height requirements for all the rides. You don't wanna sign up for rides and fast passes, rides that your kids cannot go on. You wanna make sure you know, that they're okay with getting wet if they're going on water rides, things like that. You just wanna have a good idea of what you're getting yourself into. So look at plans for dining, look at show times, look at parades, Look at nighttime things that you really want to do and try to base your fast passes around those because it would stink to, if you really want to see the, the fireworks, you don't want to go on a ride like Space Mountain where you're inside and away from the fireworks during and the then same time. Figure out what the most popular rides are. All of the new lands are going to be packed and they're going to be the first to sell out. Like Toy Story Land, when Star Wars Land opens. Um, when the runaway Mickey Runaway Railroad opens up in Hollywood Studios, that's going to be popular. Uh, Avatar is still very popular, the, the Pandora World. So all of those are going to have to be your first uh, choices, and you're going to have to get on at 7 a.m. All right, pros and cons to the FastPass system. Overall, the good benefits of the FastPass system are the fact that you can peacefully know that you have a fast pass for a particular ride before you even enter the park and you do not need to run zigzag everywhere you you know to get a fast pass so if you want to go on splash mountain you know you got it at a certain time that works for you um, it's easy to manage your fast passes from your phone or the disney experience app so you can constantly update look for new ride openings change times things like that um, so that's pretty cool cons of the new fast passes or fast passes in general the availability runs out quickly. They'll, they could sell out of these fast passes in five minutes and then you can't get on these rides unless you wait in the regular line, which could be hours. So I don't suggest doing that. You'll have a miserable time. Um, they only give you three fast passes for the same park. So you can't use two at Hollywood Studios, one at Magic Kingdom. You have to use all three at one park. Now, when you're done with those three, you can book to another park if you're a park hopper. So the Fast Pass Plus system doesn't really favor uh, park hoppers. I think they should do um, extra fast passes for park hoppers and I think they should do extra fast passes for annual passes. That's my uh, suggestion. The tiers are kind of annoying. You got to know what, what rides you can sign up for, and what tiers they are and you know which ones your kids really want to do or which ones you really want to do. Um, and another con to the new fast pass plus 
services, they opened up to more hotels than just the Walt Disney World hotels, which is kind of a bummer. So if you're staying at one of the local Hilton's or you know near the hotels near downtown Disney, you can get the 60 day window as well and magic hours. So they're kind of uh, sticking it to the people who are staying on the Disney World property um, and kind of making it easier for everybody else. So it's gonna just clog everything up more and more and more. Now, for the record, I used to love the old FastPass system, but I had to walk a lot, but I burned calories, right? So I could get on pretty much every ride I wanted to uh, without waiting in line in the old system, the paper system, I just had to walk across the park, which some people it's annoying, to me it wasn't a big deal. What I recommend Disney do is a combination hybrid of the old system and the new system. What I think is you should get one or two pre-loaded, predetermined fast passes. When those are up, you have to physically go to a, a like a digital kiosk and where the ride is and uh, sign up for the next available fast pass that it has based on what's available like the old paper system. So therefore, you can go on all different rides still, you can still plan a couple ahead, but you can get other fast passes because nowadays you really get your three fast passes and then you gotta wait in line and everything else. And that could really put a damper on your trip. Um, that's just my suggestion. And that's what I would do if I were in charge. Well, anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this video with the uh, fast pass system and hope you guys find this information useful. I got other videos on Disney planning, check out our vlogs. Let me know if there's any questions you have. Uh, planning advice or anything on the app that you need addressed. Thanks, guys.